cellulite is a very common, harmless skin condition that causes lumpy and dimpled flesh on the thighs, hips, buttocks, and abdomen. Cellulite is the herniation of subcutaneous fat, within fibrous connective tissue that manifests a skin dimpling and nodularity. Almost 90% of women experience cellulite. Cellulite is not considered pathology, because of its high prevalence and no specific harm it can cause to human. You can see mild cellulite only if you pinch your skin in an area where you have cellulite, such as your thighs. There are three grades of cellulites. Grade 1, or mild, there is an orange peel appearance, with only several superficial depression skin. Grade 2, or moderate, there are between 5 and 9 medium depth depressions, a cottage cheese appearance. Grade 3, or severe, there is a mattress appearance, with 10 or more deep depressions, and the skin is severely draped. The exact cause of cellulite is unknown. But in women fat cells and connective tissue are arranged vertically. When fat cells protrude into the layer of skin it gives appearance of cellulite. In men, the tissue has a crisscross structure, which may explain why are less likely to have cellulite than women. There are some risk factors for developing cellulitis. Cellulite is much more common in women than in men. In fact, most women develop some cellulite after puberty. This is because women's fat is typically distributed in the thighs, hips, and buttocks, common areas for cellulite. Cellulite is also more common with aging, when the skin loses elasticity. Hormones can play a role especially estrogens, female sex hormone. Cellulite also has genetic bases. A high stressful lifestyle causes an increase in the level of catecholamines, which have also been associated with the development of cellulite. Weight gain can make cellulite more noticeable, but some lean people have cellulite. The American Academy of Dermatology, AAD, has reviewed a number of techniques that may be successful in reducing the appearance of cellulite by breaking up the bands of connective tissue under the skin surface. Topical agents are most common combined with vigorous massage. Methylxanthins, aminophylline, theophylline, and caffeine, and retinoids have been the most extensively evaluated ingredients used in topical formulations for cellulite. Methylxanthins are hypothesized to improve cellulite by stimulating lipolysis and inhibiting the enzyme phosphodiesterase, which increases the concentration of cyclic adenosine monophosphate. Retinoids, on the other hand, are thought to reduce cellulite by increasing dermal thickness, increasing angiogenesis, synthesizing new connective tissue components, and increasing the number of active fibroblasts. Studies on these ointments have been small with no long-term follow-up. So, their effectiveness under the question marks. Energy-based devices that harness power from various sources such as lasers, light, radio frequency, and acoustic waves have been extensively tested for the treatment of localized adiposities and or skin laxity. Radio frequency. Radio frequency devices deliver thermal energy to the dermal, subcutaneous plane via electrodes. By elevating the tissue temperature at the target area, collagen denaturation, remodeling and neocollagenesis is stimulated, but lipolysis is also triggered. Venus legacy devices were used to evaluate their efficacy to treat abdominal cellulite in 25 healthy adult women who underwent eight weekly treatments. A reduction in subcutaneous thickness in the axial and sagittal plane of the abdomen was observed at one week after treatment initiation, and assessments by a blinded investigator at 1, 4, and 12 weeks after the final treatment demonstrated a significant improvement in cellulite appearance. No adverse effects were reported and the treatment was well tolerated. Laser and light devices, depending on their wavelength, emit energy to the dermis subcutaneous plane. By heating the local tissue they can stimulate collagen remodeling and increase microcirculation, which can improve the appearance of cellulite. The impact of these devices is not very substantial in terms of adipolysis or even disruption of the fibrous septa that characterize cellulite, but they can improve the appearance of the skin and smooth the surface. The main laser technology that has been proven effective to treat cellulite is a minimally invasive side-firing fiber 1440 nanometers ND, YAG laser. Acoustic wave therapy. Acoustic wave therapy, AWT, is another energy-based therapy, 
whereby pressure waves are transmitted to the subcutaneous tissue and promote lipolysis, improve local blood flow, enable lymphatic drainage, and stimulate the production of new collagen. Two types of acoustic waves have been used to treat cellulite, focused shock waves, ESWT, and radial shock waves. The main devices that have been used for cellulite include Cell Actor, Stores, Switzerland, and Z-Wave, Zimmer, Irvine, California. Dermal Fillers Another up-to-date option to treat cellulite is the new generation dermal fillers injections, such as calcium hydroxypatite, CAHA, and polyolactic acid microspheres, FIG. 4. These fillers have been used extensively to treat scars and can also be applied to smoothen the cellulite-induced skin irregularities.